This is Rimali uh, from DSK Legal. I am an associate partner working in the project's infrastructure and regulatory team of DSK Legal. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very recent update in the oil and gas sector, a rather interesting update in the uh, oil and gas sector, which is the introduction of the unified tariff regulations and the first unified tariff order, which has been issued by the board on 29th March 2023, effective from 1st April 2023. So the PNGRB, in order to usher rapid growth of natural gas market in the country, had brought about amendments in three regulations governing the natural gas pipelines. One, in the natural gas pipeline tariff regulations, the second set of amendments was in the natural gas authorization regulations, and the third set of amendments was in the natural gas capacity determination regulation. Following the amendments in these three regulations, it acted as a stepping stone for implementing unified tariff for natural gas pipelines in the country. Well, what does actually unified tariff mean? According to these regulations, the natural gas tariff regulations, unified tariff has been defined to mean unit natural gas pipeline tariff, meaning in respect of a national gas grid system. So the tariff is determined in accordance with the tariff regulations and is the tariff for transporting of natural gas dominating in rupees per MMBTU, that is the value in currency, and this tariff is applicable to all pipelines that will form part of the national gas grid system. That's an important concept, which has been introduced by way of these amendments. What is the national gas grid system? According to the regulations, a national gas grid system means a network of all such natural gas pipelines within India, which are fully interconnected with each other. Now, these pipelines may be partly commissioned or uh, are rather not yet connected, are to be connected. The board has actually identified 14 such natural gas pipelines in Schedule C of the regulations. By order, the board can amend, add, delete certain uh, gas pipelines from this schedule. As of now, these uh, the pipelines include seven natural gas pipelines being operated by Gale, a pipeline operated, one pipeline being operated by IOCL, Pipeline being operated by PIL, GSPL, Reliance, GSPL uh, GasNet, and GSPL India Transco Limited. So the set of 14 pipelines would actually form the natural gas grid system of the country on which the unified tariff will now become applicable. How does one actually measure this single unified tariff while considering what's the entry point and exit point for this tariff? And what are these tariff zones that we are talking about? So there are three concepts, zones, entry point, exit point. Before understanding zone, let us try and look at what is the definition of a unified entry point and unified exit point. A unified entry point means a point on the national gas grid system where a shipper injects the natural gas. It can be anywhere on the national gas grid system. The exit point is where the shipper actually evacuates the natural gas. This route, that the gas travels from the entry point to the exit point has been defined to mean the unified contractual path of that particular gas. The entire national gas grid for the purpose of unified tariff has been divided into three zones, meaning the first zone is up to a distance of 300 kilometers from the gas source. So the tariff that is applicable to this zone is then identified in the tariff order accordingly. The second zone is from 300 kilometers when the gas travels up to 1200 kilometers. And the third zone is when the tra gas travels beyond 1200 kilometers. The unified tariff is applicable to the national gas grid and is determined by the board. The board issues orders, tariff orders fortnightly and time to time issuing the unified tariff. Recently, the latest unified tariff that has been issued by the board is an INR 73.93 per MMBTU. Now, all these entities who are a part of the national grid will get the tariff as per their entitlement, while the customers would pay a unified tariff as directed by the board. Now, in case of any differences in entitlements, when two uh, pipelines are interconnected, belonging to two different entities, and there are differences in the entitlement amount of these entities as to what the actual consumer is paying, 
The PNGRB has yet to come up and notify an inter se settlement mechanism between these entities. To discuss the settlement issue, an industry committee has already been constituted. The regulation also provides for tariff review provisions to look into the same. The objective of these amendments is to provide access to natural gas in far-flung areas at competitive and affordable rates to achieve the long-cherished objective of one nation, one grid, and one tariff. Earlier, uh, a company or an industry sitting out of Bombay would probably get gas cheaper for the distance that it has from a company or an industry in UP for the distance that it has to pay for. But now, with this whole unified tariff regime which has been introduced, the objective of one nation, one grid, and one tariff seems to become a reality. To simplify, an entity-level integrated natural gas pipeline tariff has been introduced, and these amendments have become the stepping stone for what we need to see becomes the threshold for adding more natural gas to the mix of our energy in the coming years. So this was a very quick update on unified natural gas tariff. Thank you.